2 Timothy chapter number 2. Just going to read a couple verses. Going to read beginning in verse 15. This ought to be a very familiar verse to you. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. Lord, I pray for those that are providentially hindered. Brother, Brother Jim, Miss Judy flooded in. And then, Lord, I got a text from uh, the colonel, Miss Vanessa, a bad wreck, and they, they couldn't get around it. And, Lord, uh, there's others that are sick and couldn't be here. I pray for them. But, Lord, I'm thankful for these that are in the house of God tonight, those that are watching via live stream. Now, Lord, I pray for the next few minutes you'd uh, put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind uh, the sorry devil and the powers of hell. And I pray you'd speak to our hearts. And, God, I pray that your people uh, would have to do business with the Lord tonight. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, we'd find ourselves... Uh, in the center of the will of God at the, uh, at the evening ending of the service. And Lord, I certainly do pray, a crowd this size, if there's any unsaved, lost without Christ, that uh, the sweet Holy Ghost would convict them of sin and draw them uh, uh, to the loving Father. We'd see them born again. I pray, Father, Lord, for those that may be cold and indifferent on God, that, Lord, you deal with their coldness, and Lord, I pray that you'd warm their heart. I pray that fire shut up in their bones would begin to flicker and do a work in their heart tonight. I do pray for those of your family that have worked hard and Lord have faced this old wicked world and our rotten flesh and the sorry devil this week. Lord, tonight they may be tired in body, but yet there was something in them that desired for them to come to the house of God. God, I pray you'd bless them and do something special for them. Refresh them and help them. Help us, Lord, to certainly be mindful of the goodness of God. Lord, I do pray that, Lord, you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray that, Lord, the word of God would go forth. And I pray that your people would be helped. Help us tonight, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we come and, Lord, we are dependent upon thee. And thy good grace thy tender mercy. Lord, we pray your perfect will be accomplished tonight. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. Uh, in this text, I find three fundamental principles for every believer. Can I say we're to, first of all, verse number 15, study. We're to study. That word study means to probe to dissect, to break down, to research, to examine, to investigate, to weigh, or to analyze. Now, I wonder how many of us really do that when we open our Bibles. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I wonder tonight if the Lord was to roll back a screen and show our hearts and show how much we've really studied this week if we'd be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Can I say there are three elements to study in the Bible? Can I say there is the content of the Scripture? What is the Bible saying to us? What is it speaking in, in, our, uh, in its content to us? And then there's context. Context uh, tells us who it's speaking to. In order to find the context of what we're reading, you've got to read the chapter before, the chapter that the verse is in, the chapter afterwards, and you'll find out who it's speaking to. And then uh, 
uh, uh, in context, uh, as we find in this verse, rightly dividing the Scripture, in order for it to be a doctrine, you've got to see it found written in the same context to, uh, in the same individual to the same folks uh, in another part of the Scripture. You can build on that. So we've got to find the content, the context, and then there's the comprehension of the Scriptures. Uh, what is God really saying in His Word? So there's three elements to study in the Bible. Now, can I say there uh, are hindrances for not uh, uh, comprehending the Scriptures? What are the hindrances? Why do I have a hard time studying? Why do I have a hard time comprehending? Uh, the first hindrance is resources. Resources can be identified as this. First of all, time. You can tell how much people study by how much time they put into it. Now, I know what we all say. We don't have enough time. But we've got enough time to watch TV. We've got enough time to be on our phones. We've got enough time to be on uh, the computers. We've got enough time for everything we want to have time for. But if we just say we don't have enough time for God. Mm -hmm. Again, are we ashamed? Mm -hmm. well, not only the resource of time, the resource of tools. And I'll get to that in a second. But another hindrance for us being able to comprehend the Scriptures is our reason for reading the Bible. Ephesians 6.6 6 says, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. If I read my Bible and I study my Bible so that I can say that I read my Bible and study my Bible in front of men, it becomes a hindrance. That shouldn't be the reason why I study and read my Bible, so that I can tell you I studied and read my Bible, or that I can impress you because I studied and read my Bible. As a matter of fact, uh, the proper reason for studying and reading your Bible is found again in verse 15. Study to show thyself, here it is, approved unto God. I am to study and read my Bible so that God is pleased with me, so that I am approved of God. I wonder, does God approve of us tonight? Is he pleased with us tonight with our study and our reading of Scripture? I've only got to the first point of the introduction. Some of you think when it's time to bow and pray and go home. If this is bothering you, it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better, I promise you. Uh, I told Miss Annette Sunday morning, I said, this will not be rated one of my top ten messages of all time. I guarantee you tonight won't be either. Because uh, we're to study. And you know why it's so quiet in here? Because a lot of you aren't studying. You know what really blesses my heart? How many folks come to the Bible college on Tuesday night, not because they want a degree, they just want to learn more about the Bible. That blesses my heart. That shows me a sincere desire to know more about God's Word. Uh, we sing that song, more and more about Jesus, would I know. You know how you'll know more about Jesus? Get your nose in the book. Mm hmm? We see the reason the, that will hinder our comprehension of the Scripture if I'm only doing it so I can tell you I did it. Can I be honest with you? There have been times I've read my Bible because I had to read my Bible, and I got zero out of it. But when I read my Bible because I'm looking for Him, I'll find Him. Uh, and I'll find a well that doesn't run dry. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I find another hindrance for not comprehending the Scripture is our relationship. If we're out of fellowship with the Lord, we'll not get anything out of the Bible. I remember there was a time in my life I wasn't very proud of. I read my Bible every day and I prayed every day. didn't get anything out of my Bible. My prayer didn't hit the ceiling. You know why? Because I was out of fellowship with the Lord. And when your heart's not right with the Lord, your comprehension of His Word 
won't be very much. He won't comprehend very much. And we see where to study. Now, I mentioned a moment ago resources, time, and tools. There are some tools you need if you're going to study your Bible. I'll never forget when I was a teenager. Now, trust me, it's hard for me to remember when I was a teenager. When you're in your 60s and you go back 40 years, I mean, you know, 50 years, uh, uh, you know, Brother Brian. But anyway, uh, but I'll never forget we had revival at the church my granddaddy had revival at the church and he had brother Melvin Sisson preaching I'll never, I'll never forget brother Melvin preaching on this and I have found this to be true in my life there are three resources for you to be able to study three tools you need number one you need a King James Bible if you don't have a King James Bible you don't have God's word and I've preached on that enough, you ought to know that. But, uh, you know, as we found out last year, there was somebody sat here 20 years and he told me he didn't believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. It's because he got to listen to some idiot on the, on the Internet. Huh? Listen, God's got one word for English-speaking people. It's the King James Bible. I'm not going to go any farther than that tonight or I won't, I won't get to where I need to go. You need a King James Bible. need the Word of God. Huh? Listen. If you know God and you have His Word, He lives in, inside you with, through the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will teach you some things from His Word if you have a desire to know more about Him. But the two other resources or tools that will be a blessing to you, that will help you when you study, you not only need a King James Bible, you need a concordance. And a concordance, you, you might have a Bible, and in the back might have a little bit of a concordance. But a concordance tells you where you can find uh, certain things, certain words in the Bible, other places in the Bible. Uh, you can have a Strong's concordance. That's, that's the, the gold standard every preacher's got and a lot of people have got. But there's also a concordance called crudence uh, that not only gives you the word, but it'll give you part of the phrase. So you might remember part of the verse, and, and you can look through there, and you can find it. And, and a good concordance will help you uh, Find other places in the Bible so you can find context, uh, so you can find what God said about it somewhere else. So you need a, a Bible, you need a concordance, and then you need a good dictionary. Now, I like uh, an 1828 Noah Webster dictionary. That's the first dictionary of the English language. Uh, and Noah Webster used a, a, a thousand different scripture references in defining the English language. It's a real blessing. Uh, I have one here, have one in my office at home. Uh, 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 but I got another old dictionary uh, 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 that I've used a lot over the years. It was done in 1963. It's amazing uh, 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 that uh, in 1963 we used words we don't use now. Hmm? And some of the words we used in 1963 were barred from using now. But I like uh, the 1828 because it tells us what the language meant in Elizabethan English. Because a lot of the terms that we use today are slang. And we might want to use that slang term for a Bible word. And, that, and it necessarily it might not mean that. For example, uh, the word perfect does not mean sinless. Not the Bible word. It means whole or complete or entire. And so a good dictionary will help you to understand what some of these words are in the Bible. And again, if you're going to study your Bible, you need to have a concordance. You need to look up words in the dictionary. You need to understand what it is saying. Listen, uh, uh, I don't care if you read 20 chapters a day. I'd rather you read one verse and understand what that one verse means than to say you read 20 chapters and can't remember what you've read. Uh, so we see that we're to study. Mm, but there's something else, another element, a fundamental principle in these verses that I want to look at. Not only does uh, the Apostle Paul tell Timothy to study, but he also says where to shun. Look at verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now, we're to study the Word of God, but there are some things we are to shun. That word simply means this, to avoid, to keep clear of, to not come in contact with, to not mix or associate with, or not to practice. Can I say there are 
uh, things that I don't listen to because it would cause me to go down a wrong path. Because uh, profane and vain babblings lead to more ungodliness. I, I, why entertain it? Why allow it to even come into my thought process? There are certain preachers I don't listen to. There are certain uh, things I don't read. There are certain uh, uh, websites I don't go to. There are certain things I just don't even entertain. Uh, I avoid them. I don't come in contact with them. Uh, I don't need those in my life. Uh, 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 the problem with a lot of folks sitting in our churches uh, as we entertain things uh, we should never entertain we ought to shun uh, it impacts us it affects us uh, it lowers our standard for the standard of the word of God uh, and the standards the word of God uh, uh, supply uh, uh, because uh, we found a license somewhere else that we should have shunned and you can say amen to that or you can say oh me I really don't care uh, we're to shun false teachers. We're to shun false doctrine. We're to shun the byproducts of such, uh, such as false worship. We don't need to have anything to do with it. But yet, we entertain it. You know what Jesus said? A little leaven leavens a whole lump. Hmm? Uh, listen, uh, if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. And a lot of folks, uh, uh, they'll listen to uh, something that maybe is popular down there at the crossroads or the Seven Hills. Why would anybody go to a, a so-called church called Seven Hills? It's because they don't know what the Bible says. Uh, but we start entertaining some of these TV preachers and some of this stuff on on some of these radio st stations that's called so-called Christian radio. And all of a sudden, we start developing empathy for that. And then when the preacher gets up and preaches on it, we get mad at the preacher. Where if you'd have just shunned it, you'd have been all right. Hmm? Thank you, Brother Phil. Appreciate that. Y'all can look up. It's going to get a little bit worse. Peter said this in 2 Peter 2 1. But there will be false prophets also among the people, even as there, were, uh, there shall be false teachers among you, who privily or privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring unto themselves swift destruction. He goes on, verse 17 says this These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest. Uh, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Uh, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, uh, through much wantonness. Uh, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Uh, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Uh, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Listen. Last year, they talked about a college down in the mid part of Kentucky had great revival. You tuned in on it, and you saw them all jumping up and down like a bunch of Mexican jumping beans. Uh, you listened to what they were saying. There was nothing coming from the Scriptures. And the music might as well have been rock band. But they said that's a great revival. And people came from all over the country uh, and assembled down there and said, boy, this is wonderful. What they were doing is making people twofold the child of hell. You read about it and you look into it a little bit farther, you find they had women preachers down there. You looked at the way people were dressed and it sure didn't look godly to me. But see, when you entertain, boy, that was of God. You better be careful. If it goes contrary to the Scriptures, it's not of God. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he'll be a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, old things become new. When the Lord saves somebody, he changes them. Hmm? May not be a dramatic change right at first, but there is a change. Paul said, work out your own salvation. That which God puts in you, it'll work out. Uh, if God's in you, sooner or later, he's going to come out of you. 
Hmm? But I'm telling you, everything that claims to be Christian isn't Christian. Everything that claims to be a church isn't a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even Paul warned, warned the church of Galatia uh, uh, about somebody that preaches another gospel. He said, let him be accursed. Uh, said, even if an angel for heaven, he said, even if he preached a different gospel, let him be accursed. Uh, listen, not everything that says it's of God is of God. And if you don't study your Bible, you'll get to the point you won't know the difference. You won't shun it, and it'll start impacting you, your thinking, your family, and it'll draw you away from God. Hmm? There are people that entertain that, that jumping up and down and all that stuff and call it worship. That's not worship. That's fleshly. And what amazes me, Christian, is people go to that stuff, and they'll jump up and down with them. They'll come to church and sit, and sit on, a, on a pew like a knot on a log. Never go to an altar, never shed a tear, never smile, never do anything. Uh, act like they're bored to death. You know why you act like you're bored to death? Because you are, because you've never been in the book. But you get in the book and something will well up within you. Something will cause you to want to draw closer to God. Something in you, uh, I will say, hey, that's of the Lord. And I need to be doing that. But when you don't shun and the preacher preaches on your sin, you don't like it. Just go read John 16, 8. you know why the Holy Ghost came? To reprove this world of sin. And when the Holy Ghost gets on your sin, you don't like it. Your flesh don't like it. Hmm? You know what that ought to cause you to do? Repent. Get right with the Lord. Ephesians 4, 14 says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Can I say, the devil knows how to deceive people, and the devil knows how to have a false church and a false gospel and a false Bible, and the devil deceives people. And there are people leaving our fundamental churches and running for something that is not of God because they've been deceived. This recovering fundamentalist movement is killing our churches. Calvinism is killing our churches. Uh, listen, I'm not recovering from anything. I'm glad I heard the truth. I'm glad I got born again. I'm glad, hallelujah, for the word of God. But yet, a lot of people act like they're in bondage. Maybe they are. Maybe they've never been delivered. Hmm? You can look at me and tell I like to eat. I like to eat a lot. I like to eat often. When a baby comes out of the womb, guess what that baby wants to do? Eat. If you never want to eat from the Word of God and never want to eat from the table of God, maybe you don't know God. Mm -hmm. If all you want to eat and feast on are the things of the world, I'd do some checking up. Paul said this in Philippians 4, 9. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace shall be with you. Hmm? When the preacher is late with God, got a message from God, and gets up and preaches God's word, we're to do what God says. And the peace of God will be with us. But when we reject it, what do you think God thinks? Look at verse 2 of chapter number 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Do you know why we have a church today? Because Timothy took that verse to heart. He taught others and committed the truth to others. Uh, they went on to teach others uh, and we had the perpetuity of the church God's always had a remnant uh, and uh, churches planted other churches uh, and thanks be unto God uh, 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 this church was planted incorporated in 1971 uh, and when you needed a church God had here Amen. Amen. why do you think everything we do around here is, is based on the teaching and preaching of the word of God so you'll have a foundation because if you don't have a foundation, this world will run over you. Hmm? Now, notice, if you will, in verse number 17. 
Verse 16 said, But shun and profane vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Isn't it amazing? Paul named names. Jesus names names. Uh, when I name names, y'all look at me like I'm crazy, and then I get thrown in YouTube jail and all kinds of stuff. Uh, by the way, jail wasn't too bad. No, they did let me out. Uh, uh, but notice Paul names two guys here. Two guys who was teaching false doctrine. Hymenius and Philetus. Hymenius' name means nuptials. This man had a vow to falseness. He vowed to falseness, he taught falseness, uh, and his teaching led some away from the truth. Matter of fact, this guy was so bad, the Apostle Paul not only named him, listen to what he said in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 19, he said, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander? He's talking about Alexander the coppersmith who did him much evil. And this is what Paul said he did. Whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Hymenius and Philetus. Philetus' name, me, name means amiable. Uh, he was a gentle fellow, a kind fellow, a likable fellow. He was very subtle. Hmm? Can I say the devil don't show up in a red suit with a pitchfork and horns? He'll get you around somebody you, you start to like. You start listening to somebody you like. Oh, they don't use the right Bible, but I like them. Oh, they don't sing godly songs, but I like them. Oh, they don't, you know, uh, uh, hold the standards that we hold to, but I like them. That's Philetus. You start liking them, and before long, he's led you so far away from the truth, you don't even recognize it. Can I say, we'd have to have a Colosseum tonight if everybody that used to come here still came here. What happened to them? They didn't shun. And now they're out there somewhere. Let me just say this, and I don't mean to be unkind, but I'm just going to be. God never leads somebody away from a Bible preaching, Bible believing, Bible practicing fundamental truth to something that's not that way. God never does that. What leads them away? Their own lust. That's what leads them away. Or they got mad at the preacher. Again, their own lust. Their feelings got hurt. Their own lust. That's never the will of God. huh? You wouldn't believe some of the things people have told me over the years. Well, preacher, my family's going to go over here because i got a good program for the kids. Well, we got a good program for the kids. It's called the Bible. Hmm? If the Bible won't help your kids, <laughs> they're beyond help. Uh, Brother Lucas, has the Bible ever hurt you? The uh, Bible's helped you. Uh, it'd help you a whole lot more if you pay more attention to that than your dad. You know what I'm saying? No, pay attention to dad. He's a good fellow. Uh, Joseph, has the Bible ever hurt you? Uh, your mama hurt you, but the Bible won't hurt you. Huh? How many Bible verses your mama make you memorize in school? Bunch? Huh? I would not want your mama as my teacher, my principal, my school. I'm going to tell you that. She scares me, and I'm 60 years old, man. You know what I'm saying? She's only this tall, but she's scary. But the Bible doesn't hurt you. Your mama put hurting on you. She put, she's tougher on you than your daddy, isn't she? You don't know? Huh? You see them looking at you, don't you? Huh? Oh, you're trying, trying to stay in good graces, aren't you? Compromiser. Huh? Huh? The Bible won't hurt you. The 
Bible's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The Bible, if we hide it in our heart, we won't sin against God. The Bible will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from the Bible. And we're to shun anything that goes contrary to the Word of God. But how come we don't? Because our flesh likes fleshly things. That's why you put a guard against your flesh. If the Apostle Paul had to die every day, shouldn't we have to crucify this flesh more than once a day? Uh, again, if we study, we'll know these things. When you study, guess what? You see it in color. Broad color. Hey, that is evil. I'm going to shun that. But when you don't study, well, that looks pretty good. I don't know about that. I don't know. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, I said there's three principles I wanted you to see. I, we're to study. We're to shun. But we're also to see what's sure. Look at verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Aren't you glad for that? And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There's a whole lot in this verse. And let me just summarize it this way. We've we got to look at the foundation. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. We know Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. We know that the Word of God is our foundation that we're built on. It's the absolute and final authority of our lives. Uh, anything built upon the Word of God, it'll stand because the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Uh, but if it's not built on the Word of God, if it's built on principle, if it's built on humanism, if it's built on anything other than the Word of God, friends, sooner or later, it'll crack. We've got a foundation that's steadfast and sure. What a blessing. Can I say this? It also deals... With faith, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. Aren't you glad that you have the faith and you have faith in the Lord? Right. What a blessing to know that. Hey, listen, even if I get Alzheimer and lose my mind and cannot remember the day I got saved, I'm glad the Lord will still have a hold on me because I'm in His hand and His hand's in the Father's hand and I'm glad I have eternal life. He knows who belongs to Him. Now, this may bust your bubble. Not everybody who comes to church belongs to the Lord. The devil sows tares amongst the wheat, but the Lord knows those that belong to him. And then it deals with fortitude. Look what it says in verse number, number 19. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you're saved, you not only ought to shun falseness, you ought to depart from iniquity. Now, that word iniquity is not sin. A lot of times we lump sin and iniquity together. Sin is transgressing the law of God. What is iniquity? Iniquity is unequal dealing with God. Anytime anything gets more of our attention than God, we have iniquity in our life. Now, I wonder, how many read Facebook more than you read the Scriptures this week? That's called iniquity. Hmm? Now, I can preach on Facebook all day long because I don't have one. But I do have a TV. I do have email. I do have other things. And I have to constantly fight my flesh. Hmm? You know, it doesn't uh, hurt, Brother Adrian, that I know that three times a week I'm going to have to stand up in front of people. I better have some. Brother Adrian and I was talking today, if you don't put it in, God's not going to bring it out. Uh, but it's a constant struggle. If we're not careful, we'll get iniquity in our life. I wonder if we talk to people more than we talk to the Lord this week. We're to pray without ceasing. We're to have an attitude of prayer all the time. But how much time did we actually shut the world out and take time to talk to God this week? You see, we can go on and on and on and on and on and find that if we're not careful, we we'll end up in iniquity when we're to depart from it. We're to have some fortitude. We're to make time to study. We're to make time to talk with God. We're to make time 
to meditate on the things of God. We're to make time to put this flesh away and let God speak to our hearts. If so, we won't have any problem recognizing things we're to shun. We'll have no problem recognizing we need to study. We need to spend time with God. God help us. I'm interested in verse 17 tonight. The Bible says, and their word will eat as doth a canker. Now, when I read that, I think of what old timers used to call canker sores. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Did you ever get a canker sore inside your mouth? Hmm? Bite, your, bite the side of your jaw and then get a canker sore from it? It's like an open wound. Hurts like the devil. Huh? Used to, you could find this stuff called orobase. It was like a paste you could put on it and help it heal quicker. I haven't found orobase in a long time. Huh? Isn't it wonderful when you bite it, and then the next time you go to eat something, you bite it again? Isn't that a real blessing? Huh? Makes you want to go right to heaven, doesn't it? Huh? That's what I think of when I think of a canker. But that's not what canker means. You know what canker, the Bible term canker means? means gangrene. Uh, that was their word for our word, gangrene. Now, young people, because of modern medicine, you probably don't even know what gangrene is. Google it. You know, you're going to be on your phone after church anyway. Google it, and you'll find out what gangrene is. Well, Jack, we grew up, that was a common term. We knew what gangrene was. These kids today, they don't, they don't even know what yes and no is. But anyway. I got to thinking about that, gangrene. And I want to preach on this thought, the gangrene of modern Christianity. I did a little research about gangrene, and I found a lot of it deals with what is so-called church today or modern Christianity. And I say that we live in a day and age where they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. A form is an outward shell that is empty. And a lot of these places that call themselves churches, and a lot of these uh, even Baptist churches today, uh, 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 just a form of what they should be. And modern Christianity is really not pleasing unto the Lord, and it's not bringing sons unto glory. So, with that thought, let me give you the gangrene of modern Christianity. Can I say, first of all, gangrene is serious. Can I say that the things of God are very serious. Every time we come to church, it's life or death. We'll either get closer to God uh, and somebody that maybe is dead in trespasses and sin will get born again. Uh, but if they don't get born again, they'll stay dead in trespasses and sin. Uh, and if we don't draw nigh to God, we'll leave uh, uh, farther from God than when we came in. But can I say the, the, the problem of gangrene is serious. The disease of gangrene, uh, if untreated, uh, becomes very nasty, Daniel. Can I say that Gangrene in modern Christianity is very serious. There are a lot of people uh, 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 that are naming the name of Jesus Christ that do not name Him, uh, and they are drawing people away from the truth. Uh, they are drawing people away from the Word of God. Uh, they are drawing people away from old-time worship uh, and true fundamentals of Christianity. Uh, and uh, uh, people are getting caught up uh, in modern ideologies and modern things, uh, and all the while they're not delivering people to heaven. They're making people twofold the children of hell. In our area, just about every Southern Baptist church has done away with the pulpit. You know why this is called a pulpit? Because used to, preaching was so fiery and preaching was so real. It was like pulling people out of the pits of hell and then helping them get redeemed. Uh, they're doing away with pulpits. They're doing away with choir lofts. Uh, they're doing away with pianos. They've long done away with the old hymn books. Uh, and they're singing modern music, and they're getting uh, 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 what they call praise bands and praise leaders. Uh, they're wearing skinny jeans uh, and acting fruity up on the stage, uh, uh, getting people doing spiritual aerobics uh, and doing the window washing thing and brazing your neck, whatever that is. 
You know, all of that is fleshly, and all of that came out of cults, and all of that is wicked, and they brought it into modern Christianity, and friends, it's a disease, and it's happening all over our country and all over the world. You see, when I go in the islands, they have no problem uh, uh, you know, addressing the cults. They're everywhere. All the cults are down there. But here, we've allowed the cults to come into what we call sanctuaries, and we're okay with that. Listen, if you was driving down the road and a house caught on fire and you knew people were in there, you'd call 911. You'd do your best to try and get those people out of there. What can I say? There's something far ser more serious than that going on. There is this pragmatic, false worship going on, and we drive by it all the time. Don't think anything about it. If you're not careful, you'll have friends and loved ones caught up in it, and you never warn them. It's very serious. Gangrene is serious. Can I say this? Gangrene stops the blood flow. If you get the disease of gangrene, it stops the blood flow to whatever limb that you have gangrene. Can I say? It is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. But if they're not using the book, they're not preaching the blood. I promise you that. The Methodists took it out of their hymn books years ago. Uh, 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 they deny. They say, we don't preach that old bloody religion. Uh, uh, can I say? In most churches, they don't preach repentance anymore. Uh, they preach decisionism. Uh, uh, decide to trust in Jesus. Uh, uh, friends, it's more than that. Uh, you must see yourself as lost, uh, and you must tr trust in the shed blood of Calvary uh, uh, for the remission of your sins. Uh, and you must repent and turn from your sin uh, and turn to the Lord uh, by faith and ask the Lord to save you. Uh, uh, friends, without the blood, we have no hope. Hope. Uh, but modern re Christianity is stopping the blood flow. Mm. And if you're not careful, if you don't shun the false doctrine, it'll stop what God has put in you, and you'll start trampling on the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. God help us. Gangrene is serious. It stops the blood flow. Can I solve the, say this? Gangrene causes skin discoloration. It changes. Can I say, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, forever. He changes not. Hmm. How come all these places are changing what has worked all these years? What's wrong with having a hymn book? Can I tell you what? God used godly people to pin down some of them godly hymns. And them hymns bless my soul. You know, some of this jungle bunny music doesn't bless my soul. It vexes me. I know I'm not politically correct, but no, it's new. Huh? Listen. I have found if it causes your foot to tap, it's usually not blessing your heart. Hmm? There have been studies and documentaries over and over, Brother Ray, and then it came out in that Hillsong documentary. They know how to make, have music that motivates people to act in a certain way. Can I say? God gave us a book of Psalms, of Psalms. And true spiritual songs and hymns cause us to worship. False songs will also cause you to worship, just not the Lord. Why do you think John said, try the spirits, whether they're of God? They use music to motivate people to respond in a certain way. They use music to get people's money. They use people uh, music to get people to make decisions none of that means that they're truly saved hmm? even Billy Graham said that he over all the years all the people came forward in his crusades he said he, he, he believed only 2% truly got saved hmm? God help us can I say that they're changing everything about their services they now have dim lighting. Huh? 
The church house is supposed to be well lit. Why? So you can read your Bible. Well, if you don't carry a Bible, you don't need it well lit. Uh, they have motivational speaking. They don't have preaching anymore. Can I say preaching requires us to act on what God says? Uh, they're changing. Grand green causes skin discoloration, causes changes. Uh, and here's what they always say. Well, we need to become more modern so we can win the young people. There's a guy that lives three doors down from me. He goes over there to Seven Hills because that's where his grandkids go. And here's what he told me, Brother Charlie. And this guy doesn't know the Lord. This is what he told me. He said, they keep getting more and more and more and more and more away from what church used to be but they want us to pay for it. They keep wanting to say they're wanting to reach young people, but they want us to pay for it. And you can ask Brother Randy, he lives over there. They've got a circus going on over there all the time huh? to try and get young people in. You know what I found? The truth will get young people, and the truth will keep young people. Hmm? But they keep changing and changing and changing and changing. I, get, I used to get a publication out of Arizona said, remember what Baptists used to be? We still are. What's wrong with being what we've always been? Mm. Huh? Well, I'm starting to meddle, meddle a little bit. You know what else I found out about gangrene? Gangrene causes swelling. Mm. Huh? Swelling, you get puffed up. Go read 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Three times Paul talks about them being puffed up. You know why they were puffed up? Because they were worldly. They were fleshly. Hmm? People get full of pride, they get puffed up. You get puffed up, all of a sudden your nose will turn up. Hmm? Uh, God resisted the proud, but give grace to the humble. I found out something else about gangrene. Gangrene scars. A lot of people made a lot of dumb decisions and got scars to remind them of it. You know what is happening in that same Hillsong documentary I saw? These people, and you could tell these people never came to the Lord Xander. I mean, they had spikes coming out of their face and their hair's 14 different colors, and boy, but they used to love and go and jump like jackrabbits in there. But when they found out they got played, it scarred them. They'll never go back to anything called a church again. Hmm? And the devil wins. That's what he wants done. He wants to steal people away from the truth. And then if they get hurt in it, he don't care because they're never going to come to the truth. That's why you and I need to be full of God so we'll shine as lights in this dark, depressed, depraved world. Uh, but if we don't study, we're not going to get full of God. If we don't shun and avoid that stuff, we're not going to be full of God. We'll be full of self. Gangrene scars. You know what gangrene also does? It spoils. Makes things rot. It mars things. Uh, you know, we could have a rock band and place to be full all the time. But all that's going to do is rotten everything that God did that was fruitful. Let me say this. Gangrene can subside. It can cause death. You let it go untreated, you're going to die. Hmm? Can I say that you go untreated, they'll start amputating things. Paul amputated Hymenius from the faith because he was a cancer. He was gangrene. Can I say, some show themselves as clouds without waters because they're gone. There's amputation. But gangrene, if not taken care of, amputation won't be enough. You'll become septic and you'll die. You know why a lot of churches are dead today? Because they've got gangrene. They never took care of the problem. 
they serve tradition more than the God of the Bible. Uh, now listen, if we're not careful, we'll let gangrene get in on us. Gangrene affects our walk with the Lord. Again, have we been approved by God or are we ashamed to stand before God tonight? How's our walk, really? That's all contingent on how much we've, we've talked with Him and how much we've let Him talk to us this week. Gangrene will affect our walk. Gangrene will affects our witness for the Lord. It's awful hard to be a good witness for the Lord when we're not in good fellowship with Him. And gangrene will affect our worship of the Lord. We'll go to a ball game and shout our lungs out and come to ch church house and sit there like a popsicle. Shows where our heart is. Hmm? Now, many don't worship because they don't study. They don't shun. And they aren't very sure where they are with God. Let me ask you a question tonight. Have you got any poison in you? Got any gangrene in you? Have you allowed something to come in that is affecting you or your family? See, it'll show up in how we look, how we conduct ourselves, how we worship. It'll show up on how little we put this into our life. I wonder tonight, has gangrene of modern Christianity started filtering into your life? If so, there's a good way to get it extracted. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I wonder tonight, you willing to do business with God? You willing to admit to the Lord, Lord, I really haven't spent as much time with you and in your word like I should. Lord, I have started developing empathy for things that I should shun. Lord, I, I know your foundation is sure, but the foundation of my life that I'm building on is starting to crumble. You willing to come and ask the Lord to forgive you, turn from it, and start being what you should have been all along? If so, the Lord help you tonight. And your Christian life will pick up. And what is a burden will become a blessing. Worship. Some of you drug in. Some of you ran in. There's a difference. I wonder tonight, you willing to do business with the Lord? Maybe here tonight, you don't know the Lord. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved tonight. You can trust in the Lord tonight. I wonder, you will do business with God. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Well, they come pick out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're guilty of letting the devil lull us to sleep in a lot of areas in our Christian life. The Lord, it shows up. The Lord, help us to take to heart the importance of study and shunning and then standing on those things that are sure God I pray you'd speak to hearts tonight I pray that you'd help folks to do business with the Lord and I pray folks would leave out excited about the goodness of God now blessing this invitation and certainly Lord if somebody's lost I pray you'd speak to their heart God we'd see them saved God bless, have your will and way, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.